Mr. Anger, why do we have to learn this? This is the stupidest thing. I'm never going to use this in life. Okay, Anna, let me explain. Have a seat. I get this question a lot, especially in algebra class. Why do I have to learn this? This is so dumb. Who will ever use algebra in my whole life? So there is a good reason for it, okay? Other than some of you will, you know, maybe some of you will be engineers someday. Um, if nothing else, some of you will have children who will be in algebra and you'll have to help them. <laughs> no, seriously, um, I want to explain what's happening to your brain scientifically, okay? And this will help you understand why we have to learn all this stuff and why it progresses through the paces and through your math classes and keeps building and building and building, all right? So your brain has a left brain and a right brain, okay? The, the right brain is, and I'm over-exaggerating a little bit here, okay? So some people who might you know, hear this presentation and know more about it would say, oh, well, that's way too simplified. But generally speaking, the right side of the brain does pictures, ideas, concepts, okay? It's more artistic, some music, things like that take place in the right side of the brain. The left side of the brain is where we come up with labels for things, symbols, like we use in math. So if I hold up, how many fingers am I holding up? Three. Okay. That is a concept, actually. Okay, so three is a, is, you know, this has threeness to it. This is a concept. This is an idea. So that would be on the right side of the brain. But the number three is... A symbol. So the symbol would be on the left side of the brain. Um, and doing things sequentially, okay, follow, having to follow steps. And uh, that's very left brain. Some people don't like that. They, right, people who are more right brained tend to see like the big picture and they don't like to follow steps. And to them, everything is a picture, okay? Whereas left brain people tend to focus more on, on words and doing things in order and math maybe becomes a little easier you know, for them because there's a lot of steps, especially when you get to algebra, that you follow in sequence. Okay, now, here's the point I wanna make. When you were born, there was a great chasm, a gulf between the left and right part of the brain. They were not connected. And so as babies begin to develop, the brain has to begin to make connections from one side of the brain to the other. So little kids will see a little furry animal and mom will say, that's a dog. So now they have a label over here for dog, but over here they have a picture of a dog and then the brain tries to connect those. And it literally takes neurons and makes a neural passageway that connects this part of the brain to this part of the brain. Now initially it's not too strong and they begin to call every furry little thing a dog. So the squirrel out on the deck is a dog. And then when they see a cat, it's a dog. And then gradually the brain begins to connect. Okay, that is a particular type of cat. This is a particular type of dog. This is a squirrel, okay? So it begins to take labels and connect them to words, concepts, ideas. So the more the brain has to connect the left with the right, it starts to form these neural passageways, okay? And they go from here to here and all over. So all over the brain we have connections being made. Now, the first time that a connection is made is just a very thin strand. It'd be kind of like a rope bridge going across a chasm. And so it's very wobbly, it's very weak, and if it's not used much, it's just going to deteriorate. But the more traffic you start sending across that bridge, the brain says, oh, you know what? I need to strengthen this. I need to make this neural passageway bigger, okay? It'd be like making a tunnel bigger or making the rope bridge into a wider one lane bridge. And then the more the brain uses that, the brain says, you know what, this is pretty weak. I need to make this a four lane highway. And, and eventually there are some places in the brain where from one part to another, we have major highways being formed, all right? The connectedness of your brain is what makes you smart. The more connected your brain is, the smarter you are. If you don't, if your brain is not connected, you're not smart. 
So, I'm leading up to the answer to the question, why do we have things like algebra and geometry? It's because there would be no other way of forcing these connections to be made than having to solve certain kinds of problems and do it in a certain way. Okay? So, and even reading certain types of literature, let's say, or learning how to diagram sentences, all of these things are forcing the brain to become connected and make you smarter. Now, <clears throat> let me make a couple of points about this. One is that the connections only happen when your brain is working, okay, when you're thinking. You're actually taking the rope and trying to get it across to the other side and make that connection. So if you just take an answer from a score key, or you use a calculator to do your math for you, you might get an answer, but you're not getting smarter because you're not making that connection. Here's another cool thing we have learned from scientific research is that the passageways are formed even if you don't get the right answer. Just having to think about it and force yourself to try to solve the problem causes that neural passageway to form. So even in older people, they encourage them to you know, be doing, maybe your grandparents do these crossword puzzles, you know, things like that. And even if they can't find all the answers, just trying to solve the problems, trying to think about it, keeps the brain active and keeps those bridges from wearing out, disintegrating, and just falling apart. Okay? So it's very important to think as you're doing your schoolwork and not just find a quick answer. All right? That's not helping you. So school is not all about just learning a bunch of content and learning answers for pace tests. The real goal is to try to make these neural passageways work. So here's one of the cool things about, let's say, English. Is all the way through elementary and junior high and on into ninth and even tenth grade, you are doing a lot with grammar, right? All the parts of speech, the nouns, the verbs, to figuring out transitive, intransitive, figuring out all those different types of pronouns and the ways that nouns are used, all those kinds of things. But they introduced it way back in elementary. And then they added more to it, and they add more, and they add more. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to keep these bridges from wearing out. So it's kind of like repaving them every year to keep them strong, which keeps your brain active. Now here's something else that especially the parents who might someday watch this video will understand. And that is that something cataclysmic happens when you turn about 13. When you hit puberty, so 6th, 7th, 8th grade, all of a sudden, the brain says, you know what? We've got a lot of bridges here that we're never going to use. And so it goes through and cleans out a whole bunch of unnecessary connections, okay? to make room for new ones, abstract concepts, and uh, more difficult things that the brain knows you're going to have to deal with as an adult. And so it cleans out a bunch of things that were not used. And so this is why a lot of kids in junior high seem really dumb. <laughs> it's like the brain fairy came and just plucked their brain out. And then it takes a period of years to rebuild the brain, but then they end up really being smarter afterwards because the brain got rid of all the clutter and now new passageways are formed. So be patient with junior high kids, okay? Because their brains are going through a major, it's like a tornado hurricane came through and got rid of all the weak bridges. So sadly, there's a lot of junior high kids who when they're, as they're heading into junior high, the only thing they know how to do is play computer games. So that's the only bridges that they have. And those are not good bridges for the rest of your life, all right? So strengthen those, you know, in elementary school and junior high, keep those bridges strong. And you might feel like, oh, why do I, why, I used to know how to do this. Why can't I do this? It could be that the brain was trying to clear some of those out, but be patient. Some of those bridges are going to be rebuilt. They're going to come back. You are going to be smarter, all right? Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to add here. I guess the other thing is just that even the things that you have to memorize, you are, you're creating connections, you're creating special storage things that you can then draw on and use throughout the rest of your life and, that, uh, and we have to keep strengthening those. So that's why we have lots of review. 
It's one of the things I appreciate in the paces is that the character qualities, even the verses, as well as a lot of the concepts in science and history and math, they keep repeating year after year. And you say, well, I already had that concept. Yes, you did. But it's strengthening it so that you can be, uh, you'll hold on to it for years to come. All right, so hopefully now when that question comes to your mind, why will, I'll never use it. And you know what? I kind of agree with you. Some of the algebra you may never use. All right, I'm not going to try to convince you that you're going to use the quadratic equation once you graduate from high school, okay? Or that you're going to remember how to use sine, cosine, and tangent. Some of you will, all right? But the very fact that you had to grapple with it, you had to force your brain to solve those problems, you formed those neural passageways. That made your brain more connected, which made you smarter, and hopefully that will make a difference for the rest of your life. So stick with it. Keep learning your schoolwork. All right, have a good day.